she's going to do some introductions and then she's going to oh, hey go. everybody welcome 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 to this month's episode of wine for bed street we are excited to bring you the letter c this month and we are talking carignan with tana cole and greg burns of jesse's grove winery in lodi so welcome <laughs> We are thrilled to have you. Um, so we're going to do just a little quick round of brief introductions. So for those of you who do not know, I am your co-host, Lori. My husband and I own Dracina Wines in Paso Robles. I write an award-winning blog and uh, produce a podcast under Exploring the Wine Glass. I am a UC Davis winemaking graduate, along with a champagne specialist in Somme Day Service, Cote de Ron, and currently in the uh, Spanish Wine Scholar program. Keeping fingers crossed, I'm getting nervous because the test is coming up soon. So Deb, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Debbie Giaquinda. I'm a certified specialist of wine, a wine location specialist in port and champagne, and a uh, what is it, a certified uh, sherry wine specialist. Um, I'm known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess, and I also am an author of the book, Tapping the Hudson Valley, Day Trips and Weekend Itineraries, Visiting the Hudson Valley Wine Region and their craft beverage producers, farms, uh, restaurants, and I own a restaurant in Wildwood, New Jersey, or North Wildwood, New Jersey, called Trio North Wildwood. And we kick in our six-day work week starting tomorrow for until September. So, oh, and I'm also chairperson of the Hudson Valley Wine and Spirits Competition. So, wow. <laughs> and today... I don't want anything else they added to my plate. Yeah. <laughs> And today I feel we holy are inadequate. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> just a uh, winemaker here. Just a winemaker here. That is that is that is plenty. That is absolutely plenty. And today wow. we need to be thankful to Michael Kelly who gave us this introduction. And we have Tana Cole and Greg Burns of Jesse Groves Winery with us to discuss Carignan and all the beauty that it is. So welcome. And if you guys can just give us a little brief history about how how you each kind of got into the wine industry, that would be fantastic. I'll let Tana go. She's our head winemaker. Um, so let's see um, how I got into the wine industry. I was a flight attendant based out of JFK for about 15 years back in the 90s and early 2000s. And traveling um, gave me a love of wine. And I loved uh, learning about wine and tasting wine all over the world. And um, I... Um, got bored and decided that I would go back to school and study winemaking and um, that led me to California of course and um, uh, I guess the rest is kind of history. I've been um, with Greg here at Jesse's Grove off and on since um, harvest of 2018 and um, I've left a couple times, gained a little bit more experience and, and um, keep coming back. This place kind of gets under your skin and you don't want to leave and um, <laughs> Uh, he and I. Uh, I'm work, thankful for that. You know, well, he and I work really, really well together, and um, we enjoy making wine together. So we're a good team. Yes. So, um, yeah. so that's my history. Um, Greg has a that lot. That was of, very brief. <laughs> she's got. She's, she's got a lot of history. Um, Greg has um, the the longest history, though. His family started this ranch in the early 1800s. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll let him tell you a little bit about that and about Jesse's Grove. Yes. Yeah, so my, my family goes back to 1868 on this ranch. So, you know, we originally- Just we a few years. About, just, just, just a few a years. Bit. And I always want people to know I'm not the first generation. I may look like it, but I'm the fifth <laughs> generation. So we, you know, we, now I have a seventh generation that's um, 10 months old already. So wow. it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful history. Uh, we've been growing grapes on this, we're German Im immigrants and we, we've been growing grapes on this ranch since the 1880s. We have the oldest Cinso vineyard purportedly in the world. It's called the Bechtel Cinso, Google it. And it's it's a fabulous vineyard. We have uh, a Zinfandel vineyard that goes back to 1889. And this is our third oldest uh, vineyard, the um, Cinso, I mean, the, yeah, the Kerrigan. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes back to 1900, but 
Historically, I've been back to the family since the 1990s, 1994, from other careers, and took up grape, grape growing from my family, and been on it ever since, and got into the winemaking as a home winemaker in 94. Commercially, we licensed and bonded, and I brought in a consultant, and I worked the, the winery um, from 1998 until now. So this is my 22nd vintage as a commercial winemaker. Wow. And uh, yeah, a lot of history. Um, formal education was life education on, on winemaking. And, that's, that's the best you know, kind. And, and Tana yes. brings formal education as well as she's a good MacGyver as well out on the winery. <laughs> <laughs> I think you kind of have to be. <laughs> you got to be. Right? Yeah, well, that's that that is a that is wonderful and we are excited to get into carignan so we're going to mm -hmm. start our little introduction video and then it's going to be time to taste and talk carignan awesome love it Deb, I'm having technical difficulty. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, it's in there. Oh my gosh, I'll crash that. Good. I don't know. We're going to have to. You want to try it? That would be me. It says in order not to interfere with the video's audio signal. I don't know. It yeah, didn't, it, I heard it. I heard it, but it didn't it. play. It didn't oh, it play. played on my, on my it was, end. It was playing on ours, too. Yes. Oh, okay, good. So I just didn't see it. All right, works <laughs> for me. All right. Well, now comes the most, uh, Debbie's and my favorite part of the night, where we actually get to uh, raise a glass, uh, taste the wine, and say, Slancha. Slancha, mama. <laughs> Mm. That's really nice. <laughs> that Thank is, you. That is Thank beautiful. You. That is beautiful. Wow. That's our 2019 wow. vintage. Wow. It is. It is. Wow. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things on the ranch. And yeah. if you ask me about another vineyard on the ranch, I'll tell you that that's my favorite too, but they're like children. <laughs> 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 Uh, there's reasons to love them all. Yeah. Hmm. I, I get it. I get it. And, you know, um, Carignan, I think, is um, such a special grape variety. And not a lot of people have have tasted it, have had it. It doesn't, it's not a grape variety that rolls off of somebody's tongue mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, this is my favorite grape variety. But mm -hmm. I love it. I I think it's, that it is is an unsung hero in in my opinion. Absolutely. We do too, and we're finding more and more winemakers who want to make wine from our vineyard. I mean, every year we we can't grow enough of it, but there's only so much of it because it's 122 years old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's only it's only an eight acre vineyard. Um, That's it. Yeah, eight just acres. eight acres. Yep. Wow. It, wow. It's yep. a good producer. It's um, for a, the antiquity of those vines on, at 122 years old. We still, as the grower side of me, I you know, I, I we still have to thin and light canopy do all, all the normal wow. things. Yeah. It's um it's very very much deficit irrigated. You know, it's um spent most of its life with uh, zero irrigation. So it's a uh, and the vines are the vines are over six feet tall. They're huge. They're like oh trees. Oh my goodness! They really are. They're enormous. Wow. Like, what what's their what's their the width? Of, the, like it's yeah. like I don't know. Can you see? It's they're yeah. Like, yeah. yeah the oh leaves too. The leaves are enormous. Yes, the, the leaves they're can be like, this big. Yeah, like almost dinner plate size. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, wow. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. 
So oh, the, the, the winery yeah. itself dates back. You, you kind of briefly talked about it. Um, but uh, Joseph Spanker, uh, first of all, he rode cross country on a horse, like, yes, nope. uh, you know, <laughs> in 1862. So I, I don't know, you know, all I could think about is, man, my butt would be so sore, um, yeah. you know, and I love horseback riding, but that's a lot of riding. Yeah, that's um, a lot of riding. <laughs> and he, he survived he, that. Yeah. And he came to California, you know, in hunts, you know, of the gold mining. I wanted to be rich, but he kind of failed there, but was successful in another route. So can you kind of tell us how he pivoted and how this plays into role into your history? Oh, absolutely. I love that's one of my favorite things is is talking history Mm -hmm. (laughs) outside of drinking wine, of course. (laughs) (laughs) But but yes, he. uh, um, he's one of six brothers in Germany. Um, he wanted to come to California because they, in Germany, in northern, uh, he was in, up in Elmshorn, Germany. Um, it was very small, and he knew that um, there wasn't much opportunity individually. So he, he decided, I'm going to go all the way to California where they're scooping up the gold off the ground. So he, and, buy, and then I can buy all the acreage I want. So he, he spent three years, he came to the U.S., alone at 17 years old, spent three years on the East Coast learning the language. As you said, on horseback, he hooked up with a wagon train and 156 days across country to Stockton, California, which was the gateway of the the Delta waterway system for everybody that was getting into mining. He went to Murphy's um, after he provisioned, he spent all of his money outside of, of what he, I mean, what he had plus his horse and went to Murphy's and he, he mined and he got, um, he, he, he got stiffed on the fool's claim that many others had. It was just like, this didn't pan out, brag about it all you want. Uh, he believed in it. He's, um, he gave up his horse to mine. Um, three weeks into it, the old timers told him, son, you've been taken advantage of. There's no, it's will never pan out. He realized it. So now at 18, 19, 20, probably 20 years old at this time, he walked the Murphy's Grade Road to Stockton, which would, um, by car, takes uh-huh. um, an hour and a half, yeah. an hour plus. So he was he was walking. He he had a dollar twenty nine cents in his pocket. Caught cut a ride on a wagon for a dollar twenty nine cents in his pocket. He went to, ended up in Stockton. Went to work for a farmer. And the farmer recognized his talent. Made him a foreman. He spent. He was making fourteen dollars and fifty cents a month, room and board. Wow! You know, as he built his integrity with the, or in confidence with his boss, um, he he found that he he saved every dime he had, and he went to the general store and bought all the supplies that he saw that they needed in Murphy's to survive as as gold miners, and he borrowed a team of horses and a wagon from the farmer, and sold it for two hundred percent markup. Over the course of the next couple of years, he owned his own teams of horses and wagons, and eventually he was able to reembark on tw- turn 29 cents into 1,500 acres of land. Wow. <laughs> That's a heck of a turnaround. Smart man. Yeah. No, just smart man. Yeah. Yes. Very you never smart. Never give up. Never give up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, the, oh, like the right tenacity, right? You mm-hmm. can't, yeah. the tenacity of it is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he is the matriarch of the ranch. You know, he's the one that um, defines what we're about. And his daughter, Jessie, carried that legacy forward in her, her generation and um, preserved what he, he started here. The home ranch is, was bought in 1868. And it's, um, he met his wife. He met his future bride via he was settled. He, now he needed to marry because he wanted to start a family. And he met her at a wedding, he married her the next day. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. the whole other story there. It's my mom wrote the book of the family history, mm-hmm. which is spans 150 years from Elmshorn and Dargan, the two cities of Northern Germany that they didn't even know each other. They and came here 10 years apart. Mm-hmm. She came here via the Transcontinental Ra- Railroad. The tracks east, east, west were only 10 days old. And when she crossed as an indent- a freed indentured servant to come to a wedding in Stockton and start a new life. And they met, they were married the next day. And wow. 
Oh, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it's quite a legacy. My, like I said, my mom's book is, it was, is a very celebrated book. It's in. So it's, would Jesse be your mom's grandmother? Great grandmother, yeah. Great grandmother. Actually, Jesse would be her grandmother. Her great grandmother yeah. in Anna. Okay. Anna, Anna was the indentured servant that married Joseph. Right. So Jesse okay. is your what? Your wife's grandmother. My. It, my, my my mother's uh, grandmother. Oh, yeah, I, your, I meant your mother's. Yeah, your mother's yeah. grandmother. Uh-huh. I need yeah. an org chart. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, so so your great grandmother. Yes. Your okay. great grandmother. Yes. Okay. You know, wow. it's, history is relevant everywhere we go. Tana and I are uh, working with a wonderful, dear set of friends to to reface and to re embolden the value of the history mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and we're making headway. We yeah, absolutely every day <laughs> makes every our heads spin. <laughs> yeah, <it? laughs> every day, yeah. that's that's it's, so much history. It it's, is. It's that, a lot. I mean, that that really is, and I mean, and you're, you know, Jesse just her values, her virtues carry on her father's legacy down now generations. Yep. Yes, she absolutely. Did. Yep, she yep. was. A one woman band. She was uh, um, instrumental in women's suffrage, you know, the right to vote, um, everything. Um, a you know, force to be reckoned with. A force to be reckoned I with. I love I, it. I, yeah. I, there are very few men that could ever come alongside her and been able to carry the load that, and the tenacity that she had. Mm-hmm. And um, that way, the, the story is in, intense and immense. My mom, my, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that my mom was now 91 is the one that tells the story, that history. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, she, since COVID, she hasn't been back out here. um, But she would sit with groups, Mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20 people. It's, and for which it will be on our our website soon. We had it professionally done, telling her, telling her stories. And they were, she tells it in first first person character voice. You know the hero, heroes and villains all the way through <laughs> the history of Joseph and the history of Anna, all the way wow. to the present. You know? Oh wow! And this is one of her favorite wines, by the way. <laughs> oh, so she has good taste too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, she does. She, she really does. does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, and additionally, you have like a framed legal document from Ulysses S. Grant. Like, yes, we do. Like, yeah. so tell us the story of that. And then like, did that just show up? Like, you know how they find, you know, at like the antiques things or whatever, you just hope yes. happened to open a wall and it was there or like, how did, <laughs> how did we find this? We well. have so many things that are historical just in our tasting room. And mm. we're trying to decide um, how and where we're going to put all of this stuff. We even have a museum um, that's out um, in a barn um, that has old farm equipment that's not just like irrelevant old farm equipment. It's actually things that are really interesting along with pictures of people doing things. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's really kind of special. Not not just everywhere has this kind of thing. No. Um, no. How, but how the Ulysses you, S. Grant. So. Yeah. How, do you, how often do you have a, you know, this is a copy of the original. We have the original okay. in a safe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's in full color and signed by Ulysses S. Grant as a, a grant deed to the property. Um, it's uh, very special to, to carry that kind of historic history back in time. And like, did you just find it randomly or was it passed? Like, was it held coveted and was like, OK, pass this from generation to generation? Well, you know, when my mother took on the mission to be able to put the 150 years of family history together, um, that it was the art of discovery. Her aunt, which was um, Jesse's daughter um, and my great aunt, Vera Perrin, um, Vera collected everything, um, but primarily she collected the family history from from her mother, Jesse, and from her grandmother, Anna. And she carried that and to her, she lived to be 103 years old. Wow. When she was still living in her house at 95, 98 years old, I could sit with her and she could tell me the history of all 
her neighbors that lived used to live next to her. She couldn't tell you what happened yesterday, but she could tell you. They could tell you where who who lived there, where their they moved to, who their kids were. So that type of mentality held intact her mother's and her grandmother's history. It's where my mom worked with her for five years to develop the book and the timeline and translating it because a lot of everything that they discovered was in German. Yeah, so it was it was quite a legacy. But somewhere along the line, I don't know where this particular grant surfaced. It may have it was probably in a lot of the archive collections she kept in her house. Yeah. Very special. <laughs> yeah, pe people recognized importance of of historical things back then. Now people just rip things apart and throw them away. And throw and, them out. You know, There's no saving anything. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, know I told my kids there's certain things that they cannot throw out. But then again, I'll be dead, so who knows what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, over the years and years that she sat and told this story and and it never wavered from her, her book, she always had her book and she would show the page and, and the text and referenced it always. But it was, to your point, um, there were so many people that sat with her and said, I wish I had kept my documents. We had no idea that, that these all these amazing photos, we didn't know who the family members were. We just threw them away. Yeah. We said, once it's gone, it's gone. Yep. Right? Yep. That's true. Look at the legacy of your family. How they've, many they've been here a long time. Tell tell us how long you've been in the States, your family. <laughs> well, they're from the East Coast or um mm -hmm. uh Debbie, you're from the East Coast? Yeah. So we yeah, both are. are. Yeah, yeah. So um, your family probably goes back a really long way too. My family helped settle Massachusetts in the 1600s. So, oh wow! Yeah. So I'm uh, a newbie. <laughs> so wow. a long time, right? No, okay. my my grandfather came to the states in the 20s, 1920s, okay. Okay. and uh, okay. my grandmother was already here. My other side of my family, I I don't know. They came they came from Germany when Alsace was part of Germany. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, a long time. We had a relative on the Titanic. <laughs> oh, that's cool too. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully one of the survivors. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. Not very many. I don't I don't think so. <laughs> the it's it, yeah. the, the name is on the manifest and that's all we know. <laughs> that's really cool though. My wow. family were shipbuilders, and that's how they came. They were back and forth. So, yeah, oh, okay, that's they, yeah, that's why they were, why they were here, or why my um like, my great aunt um wrote a book on our family. We had vineyards in Hungary and um, oh, cool. and stuff, and she wrote a book on the whole thing. I was re reading the best trashy novel about your family. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, your guys are six generations in, in the wine industry, and that's that's pretty significant, you yeah. know, and, and how everything yeah. dates back yeah. in, and going on. Seven. In, in, in the area, are you one of the oldest families? I would say so. Yes. For we, sure. I mean, there there are a few um, other really old vineyards. I think the Kirschman Vineyard and mm -hmm. the... Michael David's um, history goes back to the, mm, I think, about the same timeline. Okay. 1860s, 1880s. Okay. Yeah, there's there's about three or four families and the Mettlers as well. Okay, the Mettlers. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's amazing how much history Lodi has. I think it, mm -hmm. it, it lost over quite a bit, but there's Lodi is a really cool place to be. It really is. I've been to Lodi and I think so. I yeah. was there on a press trip and I want to go back. Well, come there's... visit. I know you, you have to wait till January, February, or March for me to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But come on down. Or come on I, just, I was yeah. very impressed. Um, I went for um, the, uh, the wine bloggers conference a few years ago and mm. um, it, <clears throat> it was very eye opening to the, cause I, in all honesty, Lodi kind of gets a bad rap. You know, I agree. They, I agree. you know, they get a bad rap. And 
bad raps occur because people say get one one concept in the mind and that's what takes off and people don't yep. really experience it. Um, yep. But in terms of being there, the wines were exceptional and the knowledge of the grapes that grow well and how to grow them well in the region is was fantastic. And I think that that's, you know, you can have a not so, and I don't, I don't mean this in a bad way, but like a not so desirable region, right? Lodi has the heat, all of that stuff. So it's not like, ah, this is, you know, heaven on earth, but you know right. how to grow the grapes that grow well and yep. make the region be exceptional. So it's now a fantastic region to be in because yep. you know how to work the land, basically. Exactly. And and what grows well, I mean, we always, everybody comes and people who are used to going to Napa will always say, oh, I want a cab. Well, we grow a lot of cab in, in Lodi, but I don't think it's our best foot right. forward, if, if you will. Um, but we do grow Bordeaux varietals here that do well. Like our Petit Verdot is yeah. is an award-winning Petit Verdot, and it grows really well here, and it produces a beautiful wine. Um, uh, we also do Merlot pretty well, um, and Malbec pretty well as well. But um, Petit, Petit Syrah. and yeah, and Petit Syrah. So it just depends on um, on the varietals. I mean, like any region. So I think right. Uh, Lodi's gotten. Um, uh, there are a lot of things that will grow here, but there, like any other region, there are some specific varietals that do very well here um, and produce really good wine. Um, and I think that Lodi takes um, the their region so seriously. And I love the fact that you put on your own stipulations of what makes categories you know like your the the lodi rules and all yep. of that you you take what what the ttb what the you know ab you know all of that stuff and they have all their own regulations and then you guys like yeah that's good we're gonna follow those rules because we have to because it's governmental yeah. law <laughs> but we're going right. to make these rules to make sure that we're producing the best quality wine that we can exactly. in there yep yep yeah, it, it's it's fun. Yeah, it is. It is important. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we we um, I think it was from the 1990s forward uh, when the Lodi Wine Grape Commission really got some momentum going. Is then we got away from you know the the big winery format where we were the the filling element to to hit the big bulk programs, and you know we know who we're talking about when we say those big wineries. And um, and and that that transformation from there is to, into the early from the early '90s into late '90s. You know, when we came aboard in 1998 into the early 2000s, and then Lodi rules developing from there, we've evolved probably faster than most regions, because mm -hmm. um, other regions like Napa Sonoma already had their their signature. They you know they they are who they are. And they were hard to compete against, and we had no opportunity to be comparable or compatible. Mm -hmm. But you know, by by the early two thousands, there were a lot of wineries in Napa Sonoma that were sending fruit from over the hill to them from us mm -hmm. in, in their and doing their Lodi own Lodi Appalachian mm -hmm. wines mm -hmm. under their forte. Well. Uh, Lori, you're in Paso. So how do you feel about Paso and, and seeing that region grow up? Because I mean, it, that's kind of, it, it kind of started that way. And, and now Paso has moved, has moved up in the world as well. Yeah, It is, um, it's exciting and scary at the same point. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have people who are moving in that it's, you know, it's good for the it's good for the community but is it good for the community um you know and there's the there's that's there's that worried essence of you know we want to be paso and we want to remain paso and are we following in the footsteps of 
other regions that we may not want to follow the footsteps in. Um, you know, uh, so it, you know, I, it's, it's an interesting time. I would like to hope that, that as much as the money is starting to come into Paso, the people who are being purchased, um, are still sticking to their guns of keeping it Paso. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, like my, my, my favorite neighbor, you know, like that's, that's big money now, but he's still, Eric is still involved in day-to-day things, making sure it's still Paso. And that's, cool. that's what I hope continues as mm-hmm. we do it. But yeah, as, as a region becomes recognized for having quality fruit other mm-hmm. people are going to come in and want that fruit. And, Absolutely. you know, Lodi fruit, Paso fruit, it, no matter how phenomenal it is, it's at the moment cheaper than, yep. than the yep. other, fr- you know, than Napa Sonoma yep. fruit. So those wineries yep. are going to say, my gosh, this is a bargain. I can make double gold wine. I can make 90 plus point yep. wine for significantly less dollar. Yep. Why not yep. take that fruit? Yep, that's exactly where we're sitting um, with our ancient vine fruit and like like the Carignan. We have winemakers knocking on our door that that say, you know, can we please have some of your fruit? Um, we want to make some Carignan too. Or from our um, ancient vine Zinfandel, we want to be a part of that vineyard. And there's there's only so much. Um, right. And, and we vines. <laughs> yeah, <Seven bunches>. and, <laughs> and I mean, and that leads me right into your uh, Senso, like. It's, Oh my God, that seems so like bow down and praise whatever entity you pray to for that since yep. so. You yep. know, I mean, the Betchold Vineyard is the vineyard for since so. And, it's- you know, we have Turley that makes the since mm-hmm. so from there. And yep. it's incredible. It's like- beautiful. Yep. 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 Tegan does a beautiful job. Yes, he does. Um, uh, he's He also gets our carrying on, right? Yes, he gets our carrying on. Uh, oh, is it this? Oh, see, I didn't know that, but I love that yeah. wine too. <laughs> yeah. Under his own label, under yep. San, Sandlands. Yeah, that's right. Sandlands is his own label. An amazing, okay. amazing guy. Yeah. I would... Uh, I would be the first person who wanted to listen to him to be interviewed. Yeah. <laughs> he's brilliant. He's um, passionate. Yeah. Committed, personable, and you know it's just like his his boss Larry Turley. He stands out in the crowd. He's he's tall. (laughs) 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 I've been I've had I the our royalties in Fendel was um, I farmed it for uh, Turley for Larry Turley for through his one of his his second winemaker Aaron Jordan beyond Helen his sister. He went, moved on to Aaron and, and really got connected with that family. So when Tegan came into the fold, it was so natural and, and nice to, to have the Turley loop back in our lives again. <laughs> it is, it, honestly, the, the vineyard is, I, I don't think there is another Senso vineyard that is comparable to that. Like that, re- that really is the, the, you know, we're not worthy vineyard. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. We feel that way too. <laughs> you need to put up some sort of statue or something. So when people come to visit it, they can like bow down, get their pictures taken. <laughs> I know. We, we feel that way about the Carignan vineyard and the royalty vineyard as well. And you know, when okay. we take people, yeah, when we take people out there, everyone is amazed. I've, I've had yeah. friends that, that, have visited and, and want to name a vine. Um, they're so excited about seeing the vineyards because they're they're unlike anything else that that people have seen. Um, they're, yeah. they're really amazing. Um, the best experience. Now, how many acres? You you said you had eight acres, right? Of the of yes. Carignan. Yeah. Uh, seven and a half. Yeah. yeah. Seven point seven four. and a half. Yeah, we do. Seven the uh, the royalty Zinfandel vineyard that was planted in eighteen eighty nine is. It's got about a half an acre of its five acre. It's only five acre block, maybe a little bit more than half an acre uh, that is also carrying on. And so, um, you know, so the, it kind of rounds it out. And it also as 
age factor to it. So it's not just 122 years old. It's now there's some of it is potentially when it's added back in is is 130 some mm -hmm. years old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how do you how do you maintain vines that are so old? I mean, you know, here in the east, we have to every year worry about frost and you know replant and stuff. And these these vines are 122 years old. I mean, yeah, how do they, you keep them going? Still, and, still yeah. the test of time. Yeah, um, a lot of them are uh, the Carignan. Um, are falling over and we spent a lot of time last year out in the vineyard um, staking them and propping them up um, so that they could continue to be healthy and produce um, uh, the the Royal Tea Vineyard, the Zinfandel. Um, it's, it's actually a field blend. So we call it a Zinfandel vineyard, but it's really a field blend. Um, about 85 percent zen about 85 percent zen that's right and it has a little bit of mission a little bit of black prince mm -hmm. um thank you i heard that i heard <laughs> you're pouring more wine <laughs> yeah. my, my, my first glass is empty <laughs> <laughs> we like that about you um uh the but maintaining the old vines you probably can speak more to that than i can well, you've been out there helping me. Right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a labor we, of love. We use, I know I don't want to use conventional metal stakes. I use wood stakes. Um, I find a limb that's hanging low and and bring it up to the right height and, and cut that stake off just at that perfect height with a notch so that when I tie it, it won't slip. It's and like I, giving grandma a um... corset. <laughs> 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 a corset or a walking stick, right? Or a walking stick, a walker. A, a walker, yeah. Walk. It kind of looks like a vineyard yeah. full of walkers. <laughs> Tender loving it care. Does, but it's, Tender but loving again, care. It, it is TLC for sure. Mm -hmm. yep, but yep. when you see the size of those vines, oh, the Cinso, okay. because of its age, its antiquity, is just, you're, you're, you're walking in something that is pure history. Um, they, it's humbling. The royalty and the, the Zin, Zinfandel and the, the Carignan, are, you're walking in the, the equivalent of this, you know, the Valley of the Giants trees, you know, of, of vines. These are. Did you, you see know, Michael Day? I mean, Michael Kelly said that earlier. Did he? Uh huh. Just uh, on the like yep, yep, on chat. Yep, that's yeah, yeah. that's cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it? Um, Greg LaFollette mm -hmm. said um, of the royalty and of the, the Carignan, you see, he buys part of that as well. And he said, the only appropriate way to walk into that vineyard is on your knees with your hat off and, and give <laughs> homage. Yep. Yes. Give on, yep. you know. so yep. We're not worthy. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. We're here, we're here to learn. You yep. know, it's, and it tells you something every year. I mean, it really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it tells you, yeah, how much fruit do I need to drop? Um, you know, yeah. when do I need to pull these leaves? Yes. And just it. Just... It's it continually educates me. I mean, I'm, this is thirty plus years of growing, and every year up until the last five years, I think it was uh, a humbling experience of, oh, did I get that right? No, I, I don't think I did. You know, how do you how do you get the best from these vines? And and now I think we're into a vein of um, communication and or a language that the vines and we speak together. I so, think so too. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, it is. I'm it's going a, to say like that. Mm -hmm. that this 2019 um, Karen Yan, which there we go, um, spoke well to you and you spoke well to it because <laughs> it speaks humble. well to us. <laughs> <laughs> and it has carried over to speaking very well yes. to us, as Debbie said, because this is beauty in a glass. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you so much. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It is. So can can you talk us through the vintage, what it was like to to make the wine, what what you look for, you know, when you're making this, making the final product, you know, mm -hmm. tell us through how from vineyard to bottle, what you had to do for this beautiful yeah. wine. So from grape to glass. Yeah, from grape <laughs> to glass. So it's usually one of the last things that we bring in. It's it's one of the the um, things that ripen the latest. So it's typically um, 
I don't know what number this one was, but la I looked up to see what last the 20 was. Mm -hmm. It was the 44th um, thing that we brought in that year. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah it's one of the last. This was the W19037. Okay, so 37th, yeah, right. it's the, it was the 37th. So, depending on how many lots we bring in every year, it's usually one of the, the latest. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, it's late ripening and it it hangs there until the last second until we just decide it's it's time it's um sugars are right and um we're happy with the way that it looks and and tastes and um uh we bring it in and just give it some love and uh, then we let it age i think michael was asking how long do we let it age and we let it age for about um 18 months and this vintage only has between five and 10% oak. So we're very light on the oak. Um, okay. This year seems to taste a little bit more acidic than, than others. Um, is the oak uh, a couple years old? Most all of our oak is neutral. And then we'll put, um, we'll put just a, a small percentage on some new oak mm -hmm. and, um, and we'll just use that to blend back in until we we figure out exactly what we want um mm -hmm. carignan's also a really good blender so we'll use um a little bit of carignan to blend back into some some zen or something else that we want that spiciness to or a little bit more fruit um to add to to anything else that that just kind of needs it um and we'll just we just work our magic and and um in the blending room and it's still magic to us, even though we've had Every so many year. vintages. It's like, wow, watch yep. this. <laughs> Ooh, let's taste that. Ooh, what if we do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for us to get anything else done. We just like want to go out there and taste, taste, taste. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's fun. So, so now you you do spell it the Spanish way with the e uh, with on the, it. Yep. So yep. is there it? Is there a reason for that? Do you just like the way it looks with the e? <laughs> what what you know? That is a Lodi thing. Yes, so if is. you oh. ask Greg, say Karen Yan, he it would is most Kerrigan. So that's a very Lodi, a very Lodi okay. word. Kerrigan. Yep. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not Karen Yan. <laughs> not Karen Yan. Yeah. It was um I've had so so many former um, salespeople that would, they called it everything under the sun from carry on luggage to whatever, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> carry on luggage. I love it. <laughs> there were three names that I was going to give my daughter, who's Jessica, uh, the mother of the seventh generation. And, and one of, she, be, she became Jessica, but Megan was in their hunt, but also Kerrigan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she became, if she become Kerrigan, she would have a real identity crisis with like, <laughs> nobody can get my name right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that honestly, in marketing, that is actually hurt its shelf space because um, people don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it does. Mm -hmm. have and it does crisis. go by a bunch of other names as well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, all throughout the world, too. Yes, it correct. Does. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But we call it Carignan or Kerrigan. <laughs> I do. I think that that has a lot to do with not just Carignan in general, but like a lot of uh, other grape varieties in the United States. Pe mm -hmm. United States people, Americans want to be able to pronounce what they're drinking. Exactly. And, you know, they're not they're not comfortable picking up a bottle that they're like, oh, I don't know how to say this or, you know, why is yeah, this yeah. spelled this way or something like that? Yep. But yeah. I, I mean, in all honesty for this, I'm happy because this that just means more for me. <laughs> 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 well, thanks. <laughs> Interesting um, side note, not side note, but the value and history of that. There's seven different wineries that participate in this eight acre block, but okay. they're assigned you know, I, I look at my, I do the, the historical numbers and dissect it to pieces. And I look at mm, how many pounds we actually were pulling from the vineyard, not in terms of tons per acre, but pounds per vine. And we allocate to the different wineries that number of wines, of vines that um, 
that they're going to get this year. It's not how many rows. It's it could be as simple as um, how many vines in one row. The bunt are the bunches of the Carignan grapes are enormous, and some of okay. them. What do you think they top out at? They can this year. They're they're not. We okay. have to do a walk this okay. year. They're smaller bunches, but okay. they. Um, they can go up to three quarters of a pound. Yeah, per bunch. they're they're yeah, big. Wow, I mean, that's a heavy bunch of grapes. Yeah, it is. Huh. This wow, year about, about mm -hmm. 0.5. Yeah, okay. so they're they're a third less than what we would normally see. They're still size. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They're still si They're still sizing. They're not. There's no way we. Yeah, it's early. Yeah, them. it's really early. Yeah, yet, but yeah. But there's, there's, they stand off. They're so beautiful, you know, with the, the moss and the lichen on the vines from 122 years of history out yep. there. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of lichen. I think it's so pretty. I, I, I think it is. <laughs> you know, you talk a lot about your Cinso and, and Kerrigan, uh, you know, the vineyards and stuff. And at one point there was some confusion between between the two grapes. Why do you think there was a confusion, be, you know, between the grapes? Carrying on and since so? Yeah. The confusion. I think they get lumped together. Yeah. Wait. Maybe so. Um, I think a lot of um, perception is that they were used in the past as um, like filler mm -hmm. wines and um, oh. yeah. instead of as separate varietals and we just happened to be lucky here that that they didn't get pulled out mm -hmm. and that we yeah. have the opportunity yeah to continue to make them as single varietals and that but greg started the tradition i guess mm -hmm. of making them as single varietals the first vintage i went back in time the first vintage we made was 2003. ah interesting wow okay. 79 <laughs> that's a lot of vintages that is a lot of vintages um, yeah there was a 32 acre block that's the Merlot now okay that was right next door and very few things in my family ever always agree on but the but we were tree huggers when it came to that vineyard we did not want to eliminate that 32 acre block Be, but it was um, it was a 1930s 1940s no issues no vine decline no viral issues but age matters this <laughs> this vine with its 100 century mark plus was night and day i i did a, you know back then i did a side by side i said i i wanted to do the hail mary you know at the football game when you're you're behind and you're going to throw that last shot and it's into the end zone and hopefully somebody's going to catch it right well it didn't catch you know they we took the 32 acres out because they can could not carry the antiquity of the flavor profile. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's um, something that's also we find interesting about the Carignan, the Royal Tea, um, the other ancient vine, or not ancient vine, but the other old vine vineyards that are here are the intensity of the fruit. Um, from other younger vines, you just don't get the intensity of the fruit. It just, um, I guess it's the tons per acre that it produces, while this one still produces almost six tons to the acre, uh, which is amazing. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. But the intensity of steroids. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the intensity of the fruit that you get from the ancient vines is is so different um, mm. than what we get from other vineyards. And not that's not to take away from any of the other vineyards because we think that we produce really good fruit here. But um <laughs> Uh, Winemakers don't get make good bean counters, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. The, the logistics can say you cannot continue that vineyard, and we're not talking about the Carignan, but the like the West Wind and others. You know, when they're less than a ton and a half to a ton per acre, but yet, um, what arguably what what would you say the best vineyard of taste profile is on around? Who? There are several, um, uh, but Indiana. yeah, our, our sorry, West, Bay, this is Bay, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. West but our Zinfandel. West Wind Zinfandel has um, a very, um, very much a signature profile that um, for a Zinfandel that is very different from any other, I think Lodi Zen. I think Lodi Zen carries a signature and this one doesn't carry that signature and that's not mm -hmm. to take away 
from any other Lodi Zen because we we grow a lot of Lodi Zen. Um, but that vineyard carries a different signature and the intensity of the fruit is um, amazing. Um, it produces one of the best Zinfandels I've ever had. Wow. Um, and, um, I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think we do Petit Bordeaux really well. I think our Petit Syrah is um, amazing. Um, our other Zins are really good. Mm -hmm. um, we have an Alicante Boucher, which there's only 1%, I think, of wow. California's planted in Alicante. And um, we're lucky enough to have that. And um, yeah. We'll so have to some... mental note that, Debbie, for season four. All right, four I'll put that in the notebook. I, I've, I've got <laughs> stuff I've, I'm doing for season four already. <laughs> so, okay. So bringing it, bringing it back to, to Karen Yan, um, your, your Karen Yan is um, in Vaso or head trained. Um, mm -hmm. Is that typical for, I, I may, I don't even know if you can call typical because I think you guys are Karen Yan. You are what makes Karen Yan, Karen Yan. So like, is that, is that how the vines like to be grown or is that just traditional? What are the benefits of Invaso or head trained? I like the the Invaso. I word. do too. Yes, and that is more indicative of what it is than head trained. But it's mm -hmm. um, they wire was never introduced until the 1950s, 60s, somewhere in there. I think um, never became a signature aspect for putting trellising in until then, in the 1960s, 70s. Um, so it's, um, there was only one way to grow vines. Um, is it, is it a better system? Um, it's hard, it's hard to know because for this particular vine, I would say, yes, absolutely. It is. And there's a reason why, and that's, um, the, the age of these vines and what I had to learn as a young grower, um, could have shot a, a hole in the whole program. And I was thinking, why don't we train these as vertical as possible? Why do we have these long arms hanging out there? What they're that I, as we discussed earlier, have to put extra stakes in to hold them up. Why not just get back to the trunk of the vine? Well, it's the extrapolation, it's the extraction of the concentration happens with the, you know, the um, antiquity of the vine. So if you put that on a trellis system, I don't think you would have ever gotten that. You would have always kept it short. It's, it, getting these densities and complexities really matters mm -hmm. with the length of arms. I, I was back in the, the 19, early 1990s, I was able to farm the royalties and, and the Carignan both directions with a, a tractor and a disc. There's no way ever could do that anymore. They've continued to grow. grow in a singular direction to the point where they're almost touching their neighbor the ne 10 foot away. <laughs> wow. and so it's like, oh my God, yeah. is that good? Yeah, I think that's that's what's in the glass that makes the difference. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. It's also um, all of the, the attention that it gets from the hands. Um, mm -hmm. Those vines get touched multiple times because you, you just can't get in there any other way. So everything has to be hand harvested. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no um, uh, moving machinery and equipment mm -hmm. in there to, to do any of the hard work that has to be done. Everything has to be done by hand. So nice. um, it's very expensive to farm. Um, <laughs> and just like we were talking the bean counters, um, it's um, we have to convince them every year why we want to continue to do it. But yeah. um, <laughs> But we do. We because do, we do. of this right here. This is why <laughs> yeah, we exactly. have to do it. Exactly. We want to continue to do it um, because we love it. Um, there's only one other vineyard that's a Carignan vineyard that I know of that um, is as old as ours. And that's um, in Sonoma County. It's called the Oatville Vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, and it's up in Cloverdale. Um, oh, okay. I, oh, yeah. I, I think it's 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 mixed in with the Zippendale Vineyard. Um I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it's there's other grapes that grow in that vineyard besides Carignan. Is it vinified separately? Uh, yes, it oh, is. Wow. Yep, yep, hmm. yep. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Nancy, we, we Walker, need a road trip. We do. Yeah, need a road trip. Road trip. Uh, 
Nancy Walker, um, she makes um, a caring gown from that vineyard. Hers is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we know the parents of Carignan? Ooh, do we know the parents of Carignan? I might be able to Google it for you real quick. No. <laughs> I <don't. laughs> actually, I don't. I, I actually did some research and I don't think they do eat. No, either. yeah, I don't. Okay. It's, it's, it's um, intensity was in Spain and France. Right. But they, in France, they actually paid growers to take the Carignan out, Carignan out <laughs> because it was so prolific. It was yep. undermining the intensity of what their region was with their cabs and and there are other types of plants so but yeah I, I, the home is like carinena in spain yeah yeah. Like yeah. 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 Yep. yeah 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 it also had quite a quite a history in sardinia oh i did oh. not know that I yeah so know i was that. reading I up on it and i oh, closed cool. the file but yeah Oh, so. I'm gonna Google that. That's awesome. I have mm -hmm. not have not read that. Um, I know they're the red wines that come from there are supposed to be the ones that have the most resveratol. So drink up. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason. Exactly. Another reason. Yeah. Exactly. And because um, a Kerrigan is a late ripener, does it pose any problems for you? Never. I don't Never. Think we ever, no. We have no issues with with any. Um, any mold. I mean, the mm -hmm. fruit comes in every year. It's some of the most beautiful fruit that you could ever see. It's almost like it is, it is susceptible to all that. The powdery mildew, the downy mildew and all that. Mildew is his, his biggest weakness. And um, it's um, if you if you if you have any mildew pressure on your your ranch, okay. you better check there first. OK. Um, and so it's always problematic in that sense. Um, you know the you know it's it's managed in, in doing well in, in our region because we don't have the phylloxera issues mm -hmm. with sandy loam soils it has spared us here um but it's um it just it does well it, even uh, again as because it is the late, latest uh, mm -hmm. harvest there 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 have been at least three vintages of the last 22 for me where we're picking it in the rain Mm -hmm. It's like you get, you're geared up. You you got your rain suit on. You you're you're trying to spin it into the crusher, and you got protection over the top of your your um, sorting your, table. Your, well, the sorting table as as well as your um, your forklift, your spin dumper, and you know, 15, 20 minutes into that, the hell with it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> just, just run with it. We're, we're soaked to the bone, but we're loving every second of it because it, it is it's it closes the season, but in the way it, it opens the value of that season too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so when when um we have a question from Michael, he and we, we are curious too. So Karen Yan typically like as a single varietal, which is not very common, but you guys make an incredible one. Like, what would you say is the aging potential of this mm -hmm. wine? Because as I'm sipping it, the the acidity is magnificent. Like, there, mm -hmm. there's just <laughs> magnificent is the only word that comes to my mind, and it that's Thank not you. that you. is not giving it justice, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, Thank but you. but the acidity and the the tannic backbone is so well implemented into the wine and the 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 dark fruits and the spice and and the I kind of earth that's yeah the, the earth but yeah. it's kind yeah. of like a um like caramelly too oh, there's like a, a a toasted a toasted caramel um to it it's it's so beautiful so like what if I I can drink this now and I'm going to drink a lot of it tonight. Um, but <laughs> what what is the lay down period? What would you suggest in terms of how long this can can lie down? On, on this 2019. I would say, say in on this 2019 and then in general, what somebody can expect for a Carignan. You know what? I think um in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I would say five to seven years. Um, I think it 
because we do have a little bit more acid in this, it, it helps with the longevity um, because it's, it's going to soften um, the longer that we keep it in our cellar. But I think five to seven years is. is I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Okay. I'll have to pull back some of the other ventures to see how far back we yeah, can go. Yeah, see how they go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Come on out. We'll we'll jump into the library and see how far <laughs> back we can go. We'll okay. I'm, right, I'm on my way. I'll come out for that. I'm on my way. Okay. <laughs> October, November, December, I can do uh, Monday to Thursday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> come on over. I, I've, no, I've been known to come out for like three days. Okay. Four days. <laughs> we'll find you a spot. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. Cool. So what are the characteristics of the grape? So somebody that is new to care to the wine, what what can they expect? The flavors? I mean, we're talking about baking spices. Um, mm -hmm. you I think know, you get a lot of red caramel. I got some cigar, a little cigar box on it. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yep, yep. Yep. Our suggestion yeah. just took it. Yep. <laughs> um, I love that the meatiness and the earthiness mm -hmm. of it. I yeah. think that's one of my favorite characteristics of this one. I, I like it because it's something that is unexpected. Um, if you're one who drinks a lot of cab, um, it, it's it's unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something that people are, are used to drinking. And sometimes I think the same thing about the Alicante Boucher. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a flavor that's unexpected, so um, it pairs well with a lot of different foods. Um, we always say that it's one of the best ones for um, Thanksgiving dinner because it it goes really well with mm -hmm. um, dressing or, cranberry or and, yeah cranberry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we did a winemaker dinner um, that Michael helped with, and mm -hmm. um, the chef paired it with venison. And it okay. paired beautifully with that. that. But yeah, it, that was something that was really nice. Um, uh, Michael Michael is saying he's getting plum, fig newton, earthiness, crushed uh, berries, and Bing cherry. Oh, I love the, the fig mm. newton. The fig newton, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm so also getting, um, if you've ever been uh, like to the you know like to the east coast of, of spain like the humia region there's that that bramble that rosemary kind of brushness it's like the mistral when in france like when you smell mistral yeah yes. <laughs> yep i love that I, i'll often say that about some of the wines here too um that's cool that's interesting that you picked that up mm -hmm. hmm. yeah it, it is it is so complex um, but, but not to the point where this is a nerd only wine. No, it's that, easy. Drink. Yeah. I was just going to say, it's easy. It's very easy drinking. I have that written in my notes. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, um, one of the, um, California, two of the California characteristics of why Kerrigan was so popular with the big wineries was, um, it it came towards the end of the harvest cycle. So I'm talking like Gallo. Um, it was <laughs> in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking Gallo. So the, it was um, it, what it offered was the spice cabinet at the end of a long season. What name your varietal? You you got five hundred thousand gallons in this tank. You they have million gallon tanks. It's like oh my god. And so what what did they the Kerrigan have to offer. It had, you know, it was late harvest, so it came later harvest. So it came in with high acidity. It mm -hmm. came in with intensity of fruit. Its, it's fruit expression is undeniably accurate always. Mm -hmm. You can, if we aged a Zinfandel, mm -hmm. any of our Zins, mm -hmm. to that late of date, we would be into the prune and yep. stewed, yeah. stewed, fruit, mm -hmm. stewed fruit. Yep, stewed fruit. Stewed fruit. <laughs> you know, if not, the younger vines would be in the. Not to mention, gym. what alcohol level would you be at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And these, I don't. I think we're at like fourteen point two here. So. Yeah, exactly. 
There's oh. your uh, what is oh, it? Our I don't have my glasses. You tell me. 14.21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were off by your eyes. <laughs> oh, Come darn. on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I think we usually bring this in and it's still at like 25 bricks. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so, now I did interrupt you. Debbie had asked the question of food pairings um, and and suggestions. And she had mentioned that you're a vegetarian, Tana. So I'm interested in that because the big joke is I love wine, but I don't eat food. So I interrupted <laughs> you. What what are some of your favorite pairings with, with this, with this Carignan? Um, wild rice and okay. like... Um, um, baked squash, um, like a, an acorn squash. Oh, oh um, you're talking my I jam there. Would, yeah, would go <laughs> really well with this. Um, I, I said um, venison uh, because that's what the, the chef chose with, I think that was our 2015. Um, pork shoulder, I think does really well. Um, you know what? It really goes well with pizza. You were talking about that you had yeah. pizza. <laughs> pizza. And it goes, a leftover bolognese sauce. We made pizza with bolognese sauce. You know what? Sauce. Yeah. It would go really that, well with mm -hmm. bolognese sauce. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's versatile. And I think that that high acidity makes it more versatile in some ways. Um, I don't know. I love it. I'll Just about anything would make me happy with uh -huh. it. <laughs> yeah. Greg, what about you? What would you, what, what are you pairing with this? I agree with she she is a vegetarian. I'm a meat guy. Yeah. So um almost filet mignon, I think would really work well with this as I well. I can as, see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's um it's definitely the Thanksgiving wine, you know, with the, the turkey you know, especially especially now we have ham at Thanksgiving too, and this would do well with ham as well. We have ham, yeah. like, a, like a fresh ham. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just um, it can it's meet a lot of food types yeah. dead on center and run with its own expression. It's definitely, it's definitely carries its own merit. You know, when you taste, if you're acclimated to wine tasting, which we all are, um, it's just oh, that's a turning on. You know, it's um. It just it, yeah, yeah. I think it it could be even risotto, all kinds mm -hmm. of like a good risotto. risotto. Awesome with that. Yeah. 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 So this is this is a side uh, bar for everybody else, but for me, this is like a main course: dried herb, roasted potatoes. Ooh, okay. Oh, I would it. I would do that all day long with that yeah. rosemary. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, with that rosemary. Oh, mm -hmm. this is right. like, I know people put that as their side dish. Paul makes that meal. all the time. Paul makes that all the time. That's just my husband. That's his oh, favorite side so dish. Good. That sounds Roasted amazing. potatoes with fresh rosemary from the garden. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, time. Mm -hmm. Calling, calling mm -hmm. for that. Potatoes, mm -hmm. to, and, uh, you know, roasted with olive oil <laughs> and it's slightly smashed, you know, with the. Oh, there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It brings up that brambly that that those herbs that are in here that are just incredible. I I, I am just in love with this. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Glad you're enjoying and there's even I, I just might have to stay in my office here all night and finish the bottle and not share it with my husband who's downstairs. <laughs> there's even like um blueberry on um, you know on the back end of it that like every time I every time I put my nose into the glass there's another aroma that you get that, a little bit something else. Yeah. Yeah. I like the little bit of raspberry that I get too. Yeah. I get the ba the baking spice, but a little bit more cinnamon is more pronounced. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And Michael is suggesting a paella. Ooh, Ooh I like the idea. Yes. Of the yeah, that's Ooh, good cool. choice, Michael. Yes. You, yes. <laughs> lots and lots of suggestions for Carignan. For and this, this is Carignan. just such an easy drinking, versatile, food friendly wine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We think so too. Yeah. And so I'm going to ask just what, what is the retail price for this? How did, how does somebody purchase this? Cause 
Um, they can purchase from our website, jessiesgrovewinery.com. And I think we're at the $48 price point. Mm. It's just selling people. Yeah. Um, I yeah. Think that's right. I think it, I don't even, it might even be 42. I'm not sure. I, yeah. It's either way, it's, it's well worth it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's well very, worth every cent. Yeah. Thank you. Like, like Tana was saying, there's only two vineyards that we know of, ours and the other one that she mentioned earlier, that reside in that that an, antique um, aged category. And to me, that age absolutely matters on this varietal, as well as Zen. You can't you can't get that kind of quality unless you unless you hit the century mark or further right we're at 45 dollars 45 that's incredible right in between the 48 and 42 right. there you go. <laughs> yeah. that's why we work good together we're good. <laughs> it, it is absolutely stunning that the the wine is absolutely stunning and again i have to thank michael kelly for introducing us yes, to thank you michael Thank you, Michael. Uh, we thank Michael too. Yes, thank you, Michael. You know, abs absolutely <laughs> stunning. And thank so you. I do want to go. We didn't talk a little bit the the beautiful horse that is on the label. Um, what's the story behind the horse? Most of the vineyards, or not most, but many of the vineyards that are here are named after um, horses that have been associated with the winery, or not with the winery, but with the ranch. And so I, we've kind of adopted that as our, um, I guess, our logo. And um, uh, our West Wind Vineyard is a Zinfandel block that was named after a horse. Um, the Fancy Quest is also um, a horse that was associated with the ranch. And the actual um, label for that wine is uh, Greg's nephew, who is um, on, uh, what's her name, Tamarla, Tamarla, which is the daughter, I think, of Fancy, Fancy Quest. Um, oh. and to, to a national level in Cutting Horse, he he is t considered uh, highly ranked in the professional circuit for Cutting Horse trainers. He's um, He actually, uh, I think it was two years ago, he came back in tech from Texas, I believe. He won, he, he got second place in the world. Wow. That's how good he is, and to Larla, it, you know, it's fun when you, you're you all about history yeah. and you're representing Jesse's Grove as history. And here is the great grandson of Jesse on top of a horse that is the daughter of Fancy Quest, the name of the label. <laughs> wow. And, and what is what is cutting? What is a cutting horse? Um... Cutting horse um, is is cattle related. They, they work in oh, a okay. large corral. And you, there, there's a herd of cattle in there, and you have to, you have to, as the rider in the competition is solo, you have to, you have to herd away from, you have to pull away from the herd three or five different cows, heifers. Oh skin. wow! Okay. And, and then you isolate it down to one, and then you're graded and judged upon your horses and your your skill as a rider to to dramatize keeping that one cow, her heifer or, or steer away from the pack. Everybody and that's the wow. only thing you wow. just get back. And these horses, um, some of the some of the deep cuts and and almost the horse is almost on the ground going left, going right, speeding the, the, the cow down the rail away from the pack and stopping turning is it's phenomenal to watch. I mean, wow. And, and, had the pleasure of doing that working on a ranch and in road horses that were that geared and that's what he does he trains as a professional rider and uh, he's up in jackson he has the meyer ranch his last name is meyer he um he has you know he goes back to the midwest as a professional but he also takes his amateur riders his the ones that own the horses and they ride they go with him and um, you know, and, and they and the amateur 
version are, are winning top honors as well. Wow. Cool. See, I was completely off by the beauty of this horse. I thought it was yes. like a dressage type it, of uh, <laughs> the horse, the horse selection huh. there was doesn't I wouldn't say signifies quarter horse that we're that we're affiliated with. It's it's more a dress, dressage um, type of horse. Um, but it, um, the emblem itself, just having the horse emblem aspect is because we're our ranch is built on horsepower and i don't mean tractor i mean horse. <laughs> you know we go back to the 1860s on this ranch and we had uh, we had teams of 40 to 50 horses here all the time you know they, they drove the the big harvesters you know as in wheat harvesters and you know it was it's all in my mom's book. It's amazing history, <laughs> but it's amazing. So it's we're, that's what we're about, and to naming it after horses is just a natural occurrence. Beautiful. And so, how can people find you? How can they uh, come taste with you? What are your tasting? In our post-pandemic <laughs> world, <laughs> <laughs> post, I love it. Yes, uh, post. We like the word post. Yeah. <laughs> um, come on out to Lodi. We're um, um, open um, every day from twelve to uh, noon, or what is it, noon to five? Yeah. <laughs> We don't work in the tasting room. Can you tell? <laughs> That's their job. <laughs> we're open we're, sometime. <laughs> yep. We're we open noon to five and on Saturdays and Friday Actually, and Saturday. Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Friday and Saturday now we're open until seven. This is brand new. Yeah. We just extended our hours. So um, that's new to us. It is new to us. And um, we are doing a concert series right now. We have four concerts yeah. left. So oh, every seven. other yes. Yeah, every other Saturday um, or um doing tribute bands and so we've got cripple creek and whiskey nice. dawn we've got a bay um bay company and that's yeah, a bay bad bay company, company oh band. nice schools tribute band and our last one would be a leonard skinner so those are every oh, other yes. Saturday. We so, we yeah nice. so find that on yeah. our website we, Jesse's we all heard of those groups i think foreigner journey was our first and as they called forge or in our Second was Boston. Boston and what, nice. what, uh, I forget what they did. It's on that. And I just Long, saw a Def uh, Leppard tribute Long, band Long, that was like amazing. Oh, cool! That's amazing. It's um, fun. Yeah, we should. We've we should done look the, that up. We've done Beatle Mania. So <laughs> the whole segment of it. We've and we've had original artists here too. We we um, do. Um, we've had. Um, oh gosh, um, Shane Dwight. Well, Shane Dwight is is as and, and uh, to Tommy Castro, um, yeah. as you know, in the hip hop, uh, we've had a uh, tribute band that that emulated the um, Temptations. Oh, that's fun! Oh and wow! So Lydia all of has... these can be purchased online. Do they purchase tickets um, online? Yes, they can. Um, they tell us your website. Can they um, find all the information on your yep. website? Um, jessiesgrovewinery.com. And nice can they and find nice you on social media as well? Absolutely. We're on Facebook and we also do Instagram. Um, and tickets can be purchased from Eventbrite through our website. So, mm -hmm. or from the oh, website. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So they should follow you on Eventbrite to find out all the tickets. Absolutely. Yep. yep. We'll have 800 to 1,000 people out here at these concerts. And we've been doing concerts. Wow. I think this is our 19th year. Of doing concerts, it's you called Grooving in the Grove. Yeah. <laughs> All Love right. It. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right, Deb, you got to get your butt out here so we can go. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> after the wedding, my daughter's getting married in October, so after the wedding, I'll, I'll actually have Sunday to Thursday free. So well, there we go. Down. And then January, February, and March. So we'll 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 figure it out. I'd love we'll it. Figure it out. I would like to, on behalf of Debbie and I, thank you for coming and joining us tonight and sharing the Karen Yon, the history of Karen Yon and the amazing information about your vineyard site and Jesse's uh, Grove Vineyard. So, Slancha. Cheers. Thank you thank very you so much. much.
Thank you so much for having us. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. It's, it's our pleasure. It's really been enjoyable. Thank you. But thank you. Pleasure. And once again, thank you, Michael Kelly, for the introduction. Thank Indeed, you, Michael. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 So much. Bye-bye.